Glory made a grand return to China for the second time visiting one of its premier destinations, Shenzhen for Glory 57, where on this night there was an eight-man last-man-standing tournament and a title rematch for the ages between lightweight champion Sidichai Sitsong Pinong and his mortal enemy and number one ranked lightweight Marat Gregorian. The eight-man tournament featured the best lightweight prospects from China. In order to walk away tournament champion, one must fight and win three times in one night. Glory's eight-man tournament drew fighters from all over China looking to be the last man standing and crack Glory's global rankings. On this edition of Glory Rewind, we'll take a look back at the eight-man tournament and then revisit the title rematch coined the Shenzhen Showdown between Sidichai Sitsong Pinong and Marak Gregorian. Don't go anywhere. It's Glory 57 Rewind, and it starts right now. The opening fight in the eight-man tournament was between Liu Shu and Jun Chen Zhao. Shu, the bad boy of Chinese kickboxing who had fought Marat Gregorian only a few months earlier at Glory 54 Birmingham, came out with nothing to lose. Let's look at some highlights from the fight. Some strikes that actually landed this time, Joe. We start in round one. Yeah, some good boxing exchange. I think that was the really key to this fight. Both guys really wanted to come in, use their hands. Zhao a little bit more with his kicks and knees, but Lil Shoes, forward pressure, came in. See him slipping his head a little bit there. He'd take those shots to keep coming forward, but his best shots, Lil Shoes seem to be from that right hand and that left hook. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of tournament action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our five ringside judges. One judge scores the bout 30-27, Zhao. Two of our judges have a 30-27, Shu. And our two remaining judges score the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Liu Shu. With these two going back and forth, it was Shu who prevailed by taking the split decision. Next, it was Tihan Shu against Chao Wong. Both making debuts in glory, looking for their first win of the night and a spot in the semifinals. And here are the highlights from this what? second semi, se second quarterfinal round. Yep, a lot of in-range boxing, especially to start the fight. Back and forth, north versus south fighting. But good combination work from both guys. Were able to go in, change levels with their boxing, mix in their kicks. And especially that third round, it's going to come up to who the judges thought were able to land more effective strikes. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, after three tournament rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's take a look at the totals. They score this bout 30-27, Shu. 30-27, Wong. And our three remaining judges score the bout 30-27, 29-28, and 29-28. A split decision for your winner, Chao Wong! <laughs> It was Chao Wong who managed to get the split decision and move into the semifinals to face Lil Shu. Next up, Li Deng took on Alamu Tertian, with both fighters giving it their all from the opening bell. Joe, here's how it went down as we jump back into the highlights. Yeah, he went in. Bazooka Joe style here, came in with his boxing, really found his low kicks right off the start. So you can see here, he's patient, uses jab low kick, even though Tershun's as a southpaw here, doesn't make a difference. Deng came in, used his hands, used his patience, closed his distance and finds the right timing for this low kick. Bang, right there. Good timing, the way he just controlled the ring. He wasn't chasing, slowly stalked Tershun against the ropes, found the timing and found the finish with that leg kick. Tertian was trying to hide that leg, but there's nowhere really to run when you're hurt like that. No, when you're hurt like that, he did block a few, but good positioning, good timing, and the way you set them up, it just shows how skilled Li Deng actually is for such a young fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This bout comes to an end by way of the glory maximum knockdown rule. With three knockdowns in one round, we have an official time of two minutes, 51 seconds of that very first round. Your winner by technical knockout. And now advancing to the semifinals, Lee Dang. 
比赛结果在第一回合两分五十一秒，邓丽 TKO 获胜。With the brutal kicks chopping down the leg of Alamu Tershin, Li Deng took the TKO win in the last seconds of the final round, solidifying his spot in the semifinal. Then it was the last of the quarterfinal fights when Lei Feng took on the experienced Wen Chung Zhang. The winner of this fight will move on to face Hercules Li Deng next. He'll get about a right about a 45-minute break here. And Joe, the question is: Do you try and stay warm, or do you cool down and warm back up? Well, you probably got to cool down slightly and then warm back up again. But a lot of good back and forth in some of the punch exchanges, but. The advantage definitely happened with John. Came from the kicks, really attacking the back leg with his leap, low kicks. But he really had to dig deep and use his experience and realize the punches weren't his best advantage and went for the kicks. So we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals. They score this bout 29-28 Fong, 29-28 Zhang, and our three remaining judges all score the bout 30-27 for your winner by split decision, Wen Chong Zhang. 比赛结果分歧判定，张文胜。Just barely inching out the split decision, Wen Chong Zhang walked away, knowing he would step back in the ring in the semifinals to face Li Deng. When we return. We'll recap the semifinals and the finals of the eight-man tournament, and relive the lightweight championship of the world between number one ranked Marat Gregorian and champion Sitichai Sitsong Pinong. Don't go anywhere. Glory 57 Rewind. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Rewind. After outworking their opponents in the quarterfinals of Glory 57's eight-man tournament, it was time for the semifinals. In semifinal one, Liu Shu took on Chao Wang, with the winner advancing to the finals. Liu Shu on the left of your screen, wearing the white gloves. Chao Wang in the black. Tap, 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 tap. Liu Shu likes to get inside, and throw his combinations. Chao Wang likes to stay outside, use his long kicks and his jab. Here we go, scheduled for three rounds, the first of two semifinals. Little Shu already coming in with his hands and kicks. Both of these fighters squared off in the quarters about 30 to 45 minutes ago. Little Shu had a little bit more time in between fights since he was the first quarterfinal. But you were saying earlier, Joe, that. Some fighters would prefer less time between fights than more. Well, I mean, if I think ideally, if you had two fights, you'd want to stay in the ring. You know, fight both back to back. It's easier to fight, in my opinion, six rounds in a row than it would be to take time, get that adrenaline dump, and have to recover and come back. Good knee there from Chao Wang. Wong started training kickboxing in 2014. Went to a specialized school for it. He said when his mom came to visit him, his eyes were all busted up, his legs were bruised, shins torn up. She started crying and said, "I'm taking you home. I'm not letting you do this to yourself. You're my son." And he said, "Mom, let me stay. Let me be something. Let me do something with my life. I can be a great fighter." She relented, and here he is fighting for the biggest kickboxing organization in the world. Just one win away from a final. And he's really using good head movement. He likes to get his head off center line and really put his combinations together. You don't really see him wind up for those big power shots, but when he throws, he likes to put three, four punches together. As for Lil Shu, he started out in judo when he was younger, then started Muay Thai, and eventually advanced to kickboxing. Says it's his favorite sport by far. This is where he's most comfortable. And he's still only 20 years old. I like Lil Shu's punch to low kick combinations. Both guys are really content going combo back and forth. Stay in the pocket and exchange. There's the 
jab finally from Chow Wong. And we're seeing a lot more kicking from Lil Shu. And you'll learn, if you haven't already, during our introductions from our ring announcers, that in China, they say the last name first and the first name last. Yeah. So here, he's Shu Li, but we call him Lil Shu. Yeah, Chow Wong opening up again. In his quarterfinal, as the fight went on, he seemed to loosen up and get that little bit of a bounce to his step, which... Here we go, three minutes left between Lil Shu and Chow Wong. They'll hug it out. All these fighters know each other well. But after that, it's throwing fists of fury. Lil Shu wearing the white gloves, Chow Wong in the black. And they are letting their hands go. Yeah, Chow Wong's corner must have told him to come out a little bit more aggressively. There's a body kick and a good one for Wong. There's a knee. Is that a knockdown? No, says Dr. Guo Yi. Having some technical issues with our open scoring. That's why we haven't been showing you the scores. Hopefully we can get that sorted out for you. But right now, two minutes to go between these two fighters. And you would think, Joe, it's close enough that this round could settle the score. Yeah, very close fight so far. And my unofficial score kind of slight edge to Lil Shu because of his pressure. He's really trying to mix in his high kicks. So I feel Chow Wang needs to come out and keep that aggression we saw in the beginning of this round. Big high kick from Shu. They exchange jabs. <laughs> Shu loves it. Shu predicted he would land a big knee tonight and perhaps in the clinch that would put his opponent down. We haven't seen it yet. Now he keeps trying for that right high kick. There's a knee. Good left hand there for Shoes coming forward, but he's got blood trickling out of his nose right now. And he's really liking that clinch work. He's taking advantage of the, the, the five second clinch rule. He's staying active with his knees, pushing off, continuing to use his boxing and his head kicks. Oh, a body shot. I don't think Wong saw that coming. Another high kick, Shu starting to take over this round with 50 seconds to go. And it's impressive that Shu keeps switching his stances in those boxing exchanges. When he's finding that left hand, he's throwing it from a southpaw. So he's shifting his stance and finding different stance, which is showing he's getting comfortable in there. He's having fun, too. There's another high kick. Wong needs to figure something out here. Little shoe is a southpaw now. Throwing that left kick. Shu glances up at the clock. 10 seconds to go. Nice one, two. Let's see if Wong has a final flurry left in. And there's a right hand. All right, here are the highlights from our first semifinal, Joe. Yeah, Lil Shu did a good job continually coming forward with his boxing like we saw in his quarterfinal match, but he started mixing in these nice little high kicks and a good left kick to the body, but it seemed like his pressure was seemed to be too much mixing his strikes, but Chao Wang did a good job staying in there, trying to find some of his punches. Had a good start to that third round, but ultimately Lil Shu's power, especially with his punching and his kicks, were just seemed to be too much. And there's Lil Shu trying to celebrate. And there we go. He might want to cool his jets. He still may have another fight to go here in a few minutes. All five of our ringside judges see the bout and score the bout the same. 30-27, a unanimous decision for your winner. Now advancing to the tournament final, Lil Shu! Chu managed to take a unanimous decision over Wong by winning every round, thus earning himself a place in the finals of the tournament.
Next, we look to the other side of the bracket, where after taking out Alamo Tertian by TKO with leg kicks in the quarterfinals, Li Deng stepped in against experienced fighter Wen Chung Zhong. Who's the favorite in this fight, Joe? Well, I gotta go with uh, Wen Chung Zhang, just based on his age and his experience and the way he fought that first quarterfinal. You know, came in with boxing, realized he had to really use his kick, so he's got different tricks with that experience. This is his 50th professional fight, so a big moment for him, and it's taking place in his hometown of Shenzhen. He's wearing the black gloves, Li Deng, nicknamed Hercules, in the white. A lot of exchanging of low kicks, but you already see Zhang blocking it. Li Deng got that nickname Hercules because he was the biggest kid in his class, and all his friends looked to him to settle the score on the playground, and they called him Hercules. A good body shot there from Dunn. Yeah, he's really relaxed for only 22 years old. And he was sweating bullets in our fighter interview. The translator said he's very, very nervous, does not like cameras, does not like taking questions. He just wants to fight. And he's pretty good at it. Yeah. Good one, too. He's got that height and reach advantage. I want to see him stay long, because Zhang's got to come inside. Good use of the inside low kick for Deng. Good knee on the inside for Deng as well. Fight! Credit, credits Jet Li, Bruce Lee, and Jackie Chan movies for getting him into mixed martial arts. Deng just had some good body work there. He just shoe shine the body of Jung. I guess that's his focus. Boy, he looks really good, but he just got caught with a big punch. Yeah, once he's when he's throwing his combinations, his right. hands slightly drop. So Jung came with a nice counter right. left hook. Well, everything was landing for Dung. I think he just got a, a little overconfident there. Oh. Nice spinning attack there for Win Sheng Zhang. And that even touched the liver too. Tommy. Tommy, fight! Wen Sheng Zhang has a Wushu Sanda style. And how would you describe that, Joe? Well, it's, uh, they call it Chinese kickboxing. Uh, but what makes it different than glory rules is that in Sanda, you can clinch and use throws a little bit more, which is not allowed in glory. You can't sweep it and throw. But he's doing a good job at staying in the pocket and really using his distance control and his kicks. Yeah, Li Zhang with a four and a half inch reach advantage. He looks really good in this round. And Wen Sheng Zheng was Joe Valtellini's tournament favorite based mostly on experience. Entered this tournament with 43 wins, only five losses, and he's 28 years old. So three minutes to go. And Joe, I, I'm pretty confident that it's one round apiece. We'll find out for sure yeah. in just a minute. But look at the welt under the right arm on the body of Wen Sheng Zheng. Yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah, that's from good left kicks actually split. Yeah, three giving it to Jung, two to Deng. What that means is it's still up for grabs. If Wen Sheng Jung can win the third round, he wins the fight, and vice versa. Both men have landed some hellacious body kicks in this fight. Yeah, good body kicks and a lot of good knees, too. Those knees are really sneaking in. Both have a lot of redness to the body. Good right hand for Wen Sheng Zheng. The winner advances to the final to face Li Xu. Straight right to the body from Zheng. And Zheng cannot sit back and allow Li Deng, who has the longer reach, to pick him apart. He's got to go forward despite fatigue. There he took a, a nice little angle, but he needs to follow up. We have to remember, this is their second fight. We saw Wen Zheng Zheng. This is round six for him already. 
Lee Dang won his first fight in the first round, so he should be fresher. But he can't stop the forward pressure like he's doing now. He can't sit back. A minute to go. Still either man's fight. You know, Lee Dung has to be busier too, Joe. Yeah, it's still up in the air. I mean, you can definitely see the fatigue in this third round. Boy, those body shots. Half a minute to go. Wen Chung Zhang in the black gloves with a great round two. But it took his toll on him from a cardiovascular point. Yeah, Zhang keeps trying to circle out and create some angles. Yeah, you can see him as a southpaw stepping out to his right. Break. 10 seconds. They'll slug it out to the bell. Oh, here we go, the fists of fury. Great exchange down the stretch. Win Chung Chung won the second round. Lee Dang won the first round, but who won the third? Yeah, it came down to that third round. Both good, a lot of good action in that second round. We saw a lot of good forward pressure from John, which stole, stole him that round. Came forward, landed some good knees, some good boxing mixes. And that seemed to be his keys to glory for this belt was forward pressure, but it all came down to this third round. And both guys had their moments. We saw John come in, really attack that body, but no one was ever able to gain momentum. The other just coming back, came back and, and found their momentum. And this was that last 10 seconds where Lee Deng got the best of that last 10 seconds. So is that the lasting impression of the judges? Who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. They give us back a split decision. Here now are the totals. They score this bout 29-28, Jean. 29-28, Deng. 30-27, Deng. 29-28, Jean. And our fifth and final judge scores the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision. Now advancing to the tournament final, Win Chong There he is. Wei Tai Pan Fen Qi Pan Ding Zhang Wen Shu. With the win, Wen Chong Zhang secured the other spot in the finals. Only two remain. Who will be the last man standing? Still to come on Rewind, the Shenzhen showdown between the Killer Kid and the Belgium Beast. But up next, the finals of the eight-man lightweight tournament where Liu Xu faced Wen Chung Zhong to see who would become tournament champion. It's heating up. Join us, the world's premier stand-up league. As glory goes global for the Summer of Glory 2018. Are you ready for glory? Five events in 10 weeks on three continents. And you've got the best seat in the house for the hottest ticket in town. Next up in the Summer of Glory on September 14th, the heat is on as we throw down in Chi Town at Glory 58 Chicago. Marcus and Pereira battle for the middleweight title. Number one ranked Benjamin Adegbui against Jafar Wilness. And hometown hero Richard Abraham. And to round off the Summer of Glory on September 29th, it's the return of the King at Glory 59 Amsterdam. It's the Summer of Glory as we go global. Welcome back to Rewind. Glory 57 Super Fight Series capped off with the finals of the eight-man lightweight tournament, which featured Lil Xu and Wen Chung Zhong. Each already had two victories on the night. Only one could claim a third and walk away with the Ramon Deckers trophy. History will be made. 
who will win the stop, first stop, ever stop, glory stop. lightweight okay. eight-man tournament and claim the Ramon Deckers trophy. Okay. We're about to find Fight. out. Lil Shu with the white gloves win Shung Zhang in the black. And the first thing you notice is the very red right side of the body of Wen Chung Zhang. That has got to be bothering. Yeah, Lil Shu already went with it with a left hook. It's like a bullseye on the side of the body of Wen Chung Zhang. We knew Lil Shu had good boxing and good power, but I really like when he mixes his kicks. What a night it would be if Lil Shu could pull this off. Only 20 years old, coming off a Heroic performance against Marat Gregorian in his glory debut a few months ago. To come back here and win three fights in one night. Truly remarkable stuff. Fight! Stop. Even that knee Fight! going right after the bullseye. Yeah, and you can see John quickly puts his elbow down, so it's got to be bothering him slightly. As John attacks the back leg. But you're never going to come fight. into a fight like this at 100% considering you just fought twice. Fight. Looked like a slight low blow there as Lil Shu put his hand up. Stop. John already realizing he's got to use forward fight. pressure. Shoot trying to be the bully in there. Yeah, he talked about in his pre-fight interview he wants to take advantage of the five-second clinch. So as soon as you see them clinch up, he's throwing a lot of good knees in the clinch. Especially to the right side of John. He could soften him up. Fight! More body work from Lil Shu. Clear to see what the game plan is. Body work and lots of it for Lil Shu. It's the damaged rib cage of Wen Chung Zhang. <laughs> Lil Shu seems to be getting the better of the punch exchanges, especially in close range, and then he grabs up and goes to the clinch. Good high kick. Chung Chung from right here in Shenzhen. He'll be the fan favorite. But they need him to give him a spark. There's a nice lead in around. And a late kick as well. We asked Wen Chung Chung what he likes to do in his spare time. He said, enjoy a cup of tea with friends. Fight! Sounds nice. <laughs> He's going to enjoy an ice pack after this fight. Wen Chung Jung in the black gloves, Lil Shu in the white. They both fought twice tonight, earlier on our prelims, and then in the first couple fights here on Glory Super Fight Series. Strikes landed by zone. Lil Zhu outlanding Zhang in both head and body shots. You expect this fight to be a little sloppy, don't you? Well, you would think so with fatigue, but especially a lot of clinching. Usually when fighters get fatigued, you get more into that clinch matching. So you can see them clinching and grabbing, trying to take a break. Keeps them tight defensively. But Lil Shu's got to keep punching in that mid-range. Just like he's doing right there. Makes it in that lead uppercut. Now switching stances for Lil Shu. He's certainly got more energy and he's more precise with his punches right now. Fight! And kicks. Yeah, he's fighting really well. Fight! He called it the biggest night of his life and he's got the biggest performance of his life happening right in front of our eyes. Again upstairs. And I'm not sure Wen Sheng Zheng has the stamina right now or the energy to really put the pedal to the metal here against Lil Shu. Fight! 
Jong in his previous two fights did well with forward pressure, but if he doesn't have the energy to come forward anymore, it's going to be a tough last two rounds for him. He's throwing punches now. Hey. And Joe, what is it like to fight with bruised, damaged ribs like that? Well, it doesn't feel good, obviously, but I mean, in the ring there, you, you have that adrenaline, so you don't really feel it. You'll feel a lot more later. You'll feel that it probably is going to hurt later, but momentarily you don't really feel it. And it must affect your breathing a little bit as well. Well, you don't really think about it. I mean, you shouldn't be thinking about it anyways. If you're thinking about it, you know, you got other things to worry about. You got to put some offense together. Another good round for Lil Shu. This is where that mental toughness of tournaments comes in. There's a lot of variables in tournaments. Injuries, time spent fighting. And definitely mental toughness. And Lil Shu is definitely one of the toughest we've seen. Whoa, nice move there for Lil Shu as he was going down. That kick actually connected. You saw his quarter say, go get him. Lil Shu, full of energy, been playing to the crowd between rounds. And John came out as a southpaw. No Fight! There he is, trying to stay shelled up. John's trying to counter with his boxing. Head punches, 95 thrown, 57 landed for Lil Shu. Fight! Close range head kick from Shu, loving it. He's able to box and then just from close range push you off, frame you off, and mix that head kick in. Wen Sheng Zheng's corner continuing to yell for him to come forward. Pressure. They probably know he needs a knockdown. And he's doing all of his work from southpaw in this round. Trying to look for that left straight. Yeah, he found it right there. Some blood coming out of Lil Shu's nose now. His nose has been bleeding for three fights straight. And yeah, we even saw it in his fight with Gregorian. He's a nose bleeder. Lil Shu looks up at the clock, eats a low kick, and another one. Some good stuff now, finally, from the double bladed swordsman. You know, he rallied in his last fight as well, Joe. Yeah, he had to dig deep in that third round to steal that win. He's trying to do the same here. Fight! Both fighters have to be exhausted right now. Lil Shu again glancing up at the clock. Just over a minute left here. Someone's winning the Ramon Decker trophy. This is Round nine for these guys. It's that lead uppercut and that volume punching of Shu mixed with that high kick. What output for Shu. He's mixing that front kick. I wonder if he's gonna be able to hit that celebration flip that he did earlier. He still has the energy to do that. One shot could change the entire complexion of this fight. Who got the job done? Someone will hold. The Ramon Decker's trophy up high after a historic eight-man lightweight tournament. And as we look at the highlights of our eight-man tournament final, Joe. Yeah, there's a lot of exhaustion between both of these fighters, but first two rounds, Lil Shu seemed to have a little bit more energy. He was able to find his boxing more in the mid-range, mixing some good high kicks. But Wen Shang Zhang in that third round knew he was behind, came up with a little bit more pressure trying to get a finish. One of his best, probably his best round in this fight, but 
Lil Shu's toughness continued to show as he was able to mix in those punch to kick combinations. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened after three rounds of tournament action. We go to the judges' scorecard. They give us back a split decision. Here now are the totals. One judge has it 30, 27, Shu. One judge scores at 29, 28, Jean. And our three remaining judges all score them out 30, 27 for your winner by split decision. And now, Glory Tournament Champion, Liu Xu! With the win, Lil Shu, only 20 years old, was the last man standing. And with it, took home the coveted Ramon Decker's trophy, plus earned a spot in the Glory Lightweight World Ranking. Next up, the Shenzhen Showdown. Glory Rewind will be right back. Welcome back to Rewind. Glory 57's headline fight featured the third Glory meeting and the second title fight between lightweight champion Sidichai Sitsong Pinong and the number one ranked Marat Gregorian. Gregorian was determined to take down the killer kid once and for all, but Sidichai had other ideas. Judge, 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 timekeeper. Will the fourth time be the charm for Marat Gregorian, or will Sidichai's reign continue in glory? Five ready, rounds, ready, lightweight fight. championship of the world. Here we go. Sidichai, obviously in the white gloves. Marat Gregorian out of Belgium in the black. We know what kind of power he possesses in those hands, Joe. Yeah, he's got to just land it. And I mean, he's fought another Thai superstar in Superbond and knocked him out in the first round. And I asked him about it. Does that give you confidence? He says, not really. He's just so focused on getting this win. And he needs to get this win if he wants to improve his legacy in kickboxing. You mentioned Superbond. He just threw a Superman punch and almost connected. The left kick of Sidichai, though can do so much damage, whether it's the low kick, the high kick, or right to the midsection. Murat obsessed with beating Sidicha. Those other wins that he's gotten in between his last bout, it's like they don't even matter. It's just killing time until he gets the killer kid again. Even in our interview before this fight, I mean, Gregorian doesn't even care about the belt. It's more about the win. That's what he said and he wants a knockout win. Sure, he'll take a points win, but to really feel satisfied, he wants to put Sidichai on the canvas, something no man has done in glory. There's that left kick and left knee of Sidichai that's so dangerous. From long range, it's a left kick. From close range, it's a left knee. And if you've been watching our Inside Glory series on YouTube, you've seen Sidichai ripping those pads to shreds with that left kick. He also improved his boxing since he's first come to glory. He'll find a nice left straight where he'll just step outside Gregorian's foot to land that left straight. He's going to use his lead hook to try to pin the hand of Gregorian. Lead hand control. And for what it's worth, despite having a 26% knockout ratio, Sidichai believes that Gregorian's going to be so obsessed with putting him on the canvas that Sidichai is going to be the one that scores a knockout tonight. And in the previous fights, Marat Gregorian's answer to Sidichai's left kick was countering with an inside low kick. And he found success with it, so maybe he'll go back to that early. See if he can get some cumulative damage with that inside low kick. Keep in mind, this is a five-round fight. Have to pace yourself at least a little bit. Both of these men so experienced. Sidichai over 150 fights, whereas Gregorian has had 70 pro fights. And just like in their previous three matches, another very close round. Round two. 
that hand pressure from Gregorian to start. And Joe, how does Marat kind of tip the scales knowing that he needs a knockout, needs to be aggressive, but at the same time has to be prepared to go the full five rounds? Well, he's got to just keep control in the ring and not throw everything with power. He can throw his combinations to set up the power shots, and at least this way he'll keep him scoring. But Sidichai's not going to let that happen because he's going to keep distance and throw that kick. It's that left kick that shuts down the boxing. Was just informed that four of the five judges gave the first round to Sidichai. Our graphics aren't working properly right now, but I can tell you that four judges gave round one to the killer kid. Sidichai had his first professional fight in Thailand at the age of 11 years old. So even though he's just 26, Joe, he's been fighting professionally for 15 years. And when you see him outside of the ring, he's just so gentle, polite, and nice. It's, it's crazy to see the change in him. Like, by nature, he's not really a fighter. It's to support his family and get a good life. There are those knees in close range. He's got a good left knee knockout over David Kiria. Oh, there's a knee. But Sidichai blocked it pretty well. Good counter left from Sidichai. Nice high kick there from Sidichai, too. Yeah, but Gregorian found that inside low kick now. Total strikes, always close. We talked about the power of that left kick of Sidichai. How would you rate Murat's kicking game? Well, he's got good power in his kicks, but I think the scary thing about Gregorian is the punching power. You'll see him get you against the ropes, and really, when he unloads those hands, it's dangerous. I mentioned Sidichai fighting to make money for his family. He's the son of a, a poor farmer's family in Burnham, Thailand's northeastern region. Finally made enough money one day to buy a new rice plow and pickup truck for his family. Said so that was one of the best days of his life. Nice shot there from Gregorian. Answer back by Sidichai. There's a knee. They tit for tat. Yeah, but that's the Gregorian there, that he's finding a little bit more success. He's not just throwing that single strike. He's following things up. He'll come in, and this is where he's got to keep following up. So around the flew by, and there's a nice Superman punch connected there for Marat Gregorian, who certainly had a better round two than he did round one. Absolutely, that forward pressure is starting to pay off. He found that inside low kick counter. We now enter the championship rounds, four and five. It's been another good contest, a close battle between the Belgian and the Thai fighter. Six minutes to go here. Lightweight championship of the world up for grabs. Good low kick there for Marat Gregorian. Three judges for Gregorian. Yeah, two for Sidichai. Let's see what the overall score says. It's going to be so close. Still up for grabs, though. Gregorian can come back with six minutes left. And he seems to be picking up momentum. When it comes to landed strikes, not much separates the two. That was a slip, obviously. Sidichai needs to stay busy, stay first. Be more active with that kick. Can't wait too long, because that's how Gregorian can get inside. That's where all his success is. Well, Gregorian loves the Superman punch tonight. Yeah, I think that's got to be something that they planned on for this fight, because we really don't see it too much. But I do like it, because it gets them inside quickly. He doesn't have to wait to hit an arm kick before he counters. So he gets in right away, does his damage, and then gets out. It's definitely something they planned for this fight.
Marat said since their last fight, I've gotten better. Sinichai has stayed the same. But when you stay the same and you're as good as Sinichai, that's pretty good. And Gregorian is finding an outside leg kick as well. So a bit of a slower round for Gregorian as far as output goes. I still think he's winning this round. He's countering in combinations. Gorian <laughs> finding that outside leg kick again. Did Gregorian a scoring punch? Was it enough to take the round, though? So here we go, the fifth and final round. The lightweight championship of the world hangs in the balance. Be interesting to see what the judges had to say about round four. Joe thinks it's 3-1 for Murat Gregorian. Two judges gave that to the Belgian, the other three for Sidichai. Boy, look at those scores. If Gregorian wins this round for yeah, judges he... two, three, and four, he can still win the title. He's got to convince three judges he's better than Sidichai over the next three minutes. A knockdown here would be massive. Sidichai landed a little left hand there. Yeah, it's that good pressure from Gregorian, but Sidichai keeps throwing that left kick, but off the arms. That's why I'm feeling that Sidichai needs to do a little bit more with that left kick, change levels with it, maybe go to the leg, Ooh. go back upstairs. Good straight left again for Sidichai. These rounds have been so close, Joe. Once yeah. again, neither fighter can complain if they don't win. Like, I mean, I, I'm calling slight edge, but I mean, I guarantee you I can watch this fight again and see something totally different. Sidichai had some time finally to throw that left kick. Whoa, another straight left. Brat nods his head. Yeah, nice angling out from Sidichai, too. Marat seems, though, to have just a bit more energy here. Let's see if he can let it all hang out with a minute to go. There's another straight left from Sidichai. Both men have tape coming off their gloves. <laughs> Who trained harder? Who can dig deeper? I'm even sitting here holding my breath. I don't even... I'm absorbed in this fight as a fan. 30 seconds left, a deep breath for Marat Gregorian. It's go time, man. Let's see if you can do it. It's that angle out and that pivot from Sidichai. Trying to do anything he can to get some spectacular offense. 10 seconds left. So here we go, they let it go. Another fantastic encounter between Marat Gregorian and Sidichai Sitsong Pinong. Did the killer kid do it again? We welcome you back one final time to Shenzhen, China. Lightweight championship of the world, Joe, and another close, tough battle. Yeah, and me, number four was just like the other ones. A lot of back and forth, same side of style, that left kick of Sinichai, but Gregorian did a good job at countering coming forward, trying to land his punches. We saw that Superman punch, probably something they worked on to, to close distance at a fast pace.
good inside boxing ranges. Again, every round, close, close, as close as it can be. Sidichai finding some good left hands. Marat Gregorian finding some good pressure with his outside low kicks. Round five was up. Three judges had it a draw going into the fifth round, so we're going to have to see who wins it. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. They give us back a split decision. Here now are the totals. They score this bout 48-47, Gregorian. 48-47, Sinichai. And our three remaining judges also score the bout 48-47 for your winner by split decision. And still, glory, lightweight champion of the world, City Chai sits on Pinon. With a split decision win over Marat Gregorian, City Chai defends his glory title for the fifth time and in the process remains unbeaten against his rival. Up next, Glory heads to Chicago for the second time in 2018 for Glory 58 on September 14th, featuring the middleweight world title rematch between Alex Poetan Pereira and the one Simon Marcus. There is no love lost between these two, and this may well be the fight of the year. Marcus is determined to reclaim the belt he lost to Pereira at Glory 46, and Pereira has no doubt he'll retain the title. In addition, a heavyweight battle of the Titans between number one ranked Benjamin Adegbui and fifth ranked Jafar Wellness takes place. It all happens September 14th at Glory 58 Chicago. You won't want to miss it. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on Glory Rewind.